third week in a row I think maybe our fourth week now we just be cruising through them we'd be flying on these videos as you guys seen last week I ended you guys off with this sweet little red ruby I think was her name is her name her name's red ruby red what red raggy I thought it was Rudy Rudy not Ruby Rudy red Rudy red Rudy we got Red Rudy here. We're getting real close to wrapping her up. I left you guys off with a little teaser on how to do the alignment on the front end of these. If you guys already know, well, bear with me. You're going to have to watch it anyways. They're pretty simple. They're a little bit more complex than the modern day stuff. You got to shim them in order to get your uh, um, alignment the way that you want it here. So I got it sitting pretty well on the toe. I think in and out is pretty good left to right. Right now I'm working on this camber. She's pretty close to this fender here. So we want to kick that wheel in just a skosh. And the way that we do that is we come up here to these rods right up here, or these bolts on this rod. And what we do is we just loosen these guys up, this one here, this one here, and we put shims back there. As you guys can see, there's one shim right there. Freaking garbage, man. I thought he was done. But no, now he's got to drive by our freaking place or stop outside stop outside with his radio on get on with yourself man we'll be back all right i can't be mad just met a gentleman named will he works for the city he got an s2000 he'd be making noise with the dumpsters but by golly we'll take it hopefully hopefully we can see this s2000 he just picked up yeah beautiful beautiful oem red oh it looks gorgeous now that the noisy man's gone back to our alignment as you guys as i was saying we got shims down here so what you do is you loosen these back and you bring this whole guy back and you throw some shims in there and you bring it back till you get that toe kind of where you want it i'm gonna go ahead and play around with that a little bit more right now and then I'm gonna pull this thing, probably not off the lift. I'm gonna put it back up in the air so I can start building this thing exhaust. But Donnie and I gotta run out to the junkyard today, get a couple clips for Kenny's car, do a little browse around, see what we can get ourselves into. But right now, let's get some shims in there. Well, we just took that shorty header, chopped it up, and made our own header out of it. This is gonna work. I have to clear that rack. It is not meant to be there, and we put it there, so now we gotta make the headers work with it. That's where I'm at on this thing. I was in the midst of cleaning these up, and then I got to looking, and the flange is just warped. Yep, super warped. So I'm not even gonna try to make those work. So I reached out to the customer, said, yo, Nacho, can I chop these up? He said, man, do what you gotta do. So that's where we're at. We're gonna Cerakote these black. For, so for all you guys that's worried about the chrome on this, hey, don't be mad, they're going black. That's where I'm at. I'm gonna mock this up and then I'm gonna kick this with just another pie, like that with three inch. Turn it, put my flange on the end of that, then, We'll be able to start building some exhaust going all the way back. This side bolts up no problem. It kind of clears. Not really. I have, I don't know, three inches, four inches to work with between it and the rack. So we're going to come out of it and just start pieing like crazy and coming back. Yes, I'm MIG welding it. Y'all can judge if you want. I don't care. Judge away. But until you guys go get one, hey, no judging. I'm sure there's better welders out there watching. And good for you guys. 
I'm gonna get back to work now. Hopefully y'all are ready for me to talk. Quick little update. I've been working like crazy. It's currently Thursday night for me. I have been at it since Monday morning at seven. Been putting in, I don't know, 16 to 18 hour days. I'm approaching 60, call it 60 hours for the week. This dude's beat, all right? I've been working a lot, putting in the hours, so I just don't quite have the time to pick up the camera like I really would and YouTube for you guys. I don't wanna put out bad videos, but I still wanna put out videos. So this one's gonna be a little slow, just like the last one was a little slow. I'm gonna get back into the groove, I'm trying to film these projects, but I'm learning a lot on these projects. On Nacho's truck, first time doing a four link by myself. Had to chop the whole front end off this thing, get the engine sitting centered, get the all the suspension back the way it should be. In my head, I know how to do it. On pen and paper, I know how to do it. You look up the schematics and it all makes sense to me with angles and measurements and tie rod ends and how to keep from understeering and oversteering and all of that makes total perfect sense to me. I look it up, I find it, I get it, I got it, I understand it. So that's how I was able to build this front end on Nacho's truck, do the four link on Nacho's truck. I have one little hiccup. I measured the shocks level from this bar versus the ground and the one tabs like an inch off in the back so it has just a little bit of a lean. No big deal, cut that one off tomorrow, get the shock centered up. It, too easy, it's a 20 minute fix on my half, oh well. As far as doing vehicles on a budget, like I was trying to say, there's going to be welders out there that are people that weld that just say I'm terrible. There's going to be people that are less than I that think I'm decent. I would like to say I'm mediocre. I'm not amazing by no means, but I can definitely get the job done. The welds look decent. They don't break. They are MIG weld, but that's okay. So on this, we had a set of shorty headers. They were not working with our rack and pinion setup. They are right down here. It just, there was no way to make the shorty work. As I showed you guys, I could not use the long tube that they had. Long story short, if I was to charge Nacho for everything that we should do, everything we had to replace, everything we had to fix, he would be $20,000, guys, into this truck. So I'm trying to keep it on a budget for him that we agreed on. He brought me parts. So I'm making them work. I gotta tighten that exhaust up a little bit. But anyways, we're making them work. It's down there, that shorty header. You can see my bend there. It looks a little goofy, but I had to clear the upper tie rod, or the tie rods, I had to clear the rack, and I had to clear the oil filter along with the frame and everything else. On this other side, this one went pretty well. I didn't really have to modify the header at all. I was able to bolt a piece on, run it down underneath the starter and out the back. This one looks really good, really clean, really nice underneath. Super happy with how that one went. Like I said, I have a little hiccup on the four link. You can see this tire is just sitting a little high. It's due to that shock. I guess I'll show you guys. This shock right here is sitting just a little bit lower on that bar than there. I should have taken an angle and turned it up a little bit more and that would have put that shock right where I wanted it. No harm, no foul. Like I said, cut it off, grind it down. I got another tab already here. We'll put that one on. The steering. I think I can make it work. If not, I gotta get a steer longer steering rod. It clears the back of the header. I did so many little things on this truck that were new to me, first for me, not really new. It's all, nothing's new. It's all already been done. Um, I just had to figure it out. So now I gotta get the rear brakes figured out, finish up that, the headers are done, get the holly put on this thing, if we still do that. Make sure my yoke on my driveline is gonna work. I gotta count the splines so I can order a new one just to be safe. Lots of little things, but I have this coupe sitting here that really needs this engine pulled. It has a hole in the block, and I've also got Kenny's car here. Doesn't look like we've been doing much, but we've been doing a lot. We've been figuring out a lot of wiring on the pinning. We've been figuring out pinning here. I've been trying to figure out engine harness. 
there's not a lot of these done. I can't find anything online for this. So this is just another one where I gotta use my knowledge, use my brain, adapt and overcome the situation, and make it work. Good thing I got a power probe. I'll be able to probe out some things, find powers, find grounds, find the voltages, yada, yada, yada. But that's kind of where I'm at, guys. I wanted to give you a little update. I've just been, it's just been me down here all week working. I've literally been on this truck all week. So for y'all that don't understand, it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of thinking. It takes a lot of braining to come up with how to do these. It's not every day you just chop the front end off a truck and work with what you got when you don't even know what it is. I think it's still a 67 to 69 Camaro, something like that front end, Chevelle. One of those, you just work with it. I'm beat guys, like I said, 20, 40, 60. Heck, it might be even close to 80 hours um, for this week that I'm already put in the hours. It's again, it's already past midnight down here on this Thursday, um, but tomorrow being Friday, I'm gonna be working on the NSX all day. That's all I'm dedicating my day to. So tonight, what I'd really kind of like to do for the rest of my time being down here is get the NSX pushed back, get this truck moved, get this car over onto the lift and get the engine out of this thing. Yeah, I know that seems like a lot of work to get the engine out, but by golly, having this on the lift will make suspension, all that type of stuff really easy. Um, I still gotta put the fuel pump and the fuel tank back in Nacho's truck. I'm beat guys, but I'm gonna get back to work because quitters just don't quit. Hustlers just don't quit, quitters quit. Hustlers don't quit and I'm hustling. I want to make a living for my wife and I and my friends and family um, That's what this is all about. This isn't just about me. It's about my customers It's about everything and that's another thing. I want to tell you guys if you're still with me I know I'm seven minutes into blabbing with God golly It's hard for me to charge my customers. I'm not gonna lie. That's it's a hard business side of things I want to just do more and keep giving and giving and giving but you have to draw a line with your customers. You can't make all of them your friends as much as you'd like to. You can get them real close and you can do them a solid job. But at the end of the day, you can't just keep giving to customers. You gotta kinda give them what they pay for, give them a little bit extra, you know, and uh, just do them a really good job. That's what this is all about, is doing a good job. That's what I'm trying my best. I'm gonna leave you guys off with that for the night. I'm gonna move cars around and try to get this engine pulled. So I started it on this uh, wiring harness here. As you guys can see, I started making some headway on it. I believe I've got most all the engine hooked up. I've got some down on that side that I gotta hook up. And then, oh my goodness. Tired, let me tell you. Anyways, um, right here we've got the thermostat ground. And then this is uh, for the starter here the starter signal, so that's good. So we'll hook up both those. I believe the rest of these are all for automatic transmission, which we don't have. This is mostly gonna be, I think this whole plug's automatic transmission, other than the starter and that ground. Then we have a few little loose ends here. Um, these guys, these two and this one, would be for TPS sensor and MAP sensor. This has got an electronic throttle body on it, so we're gonna have to get rid of that throttle body setup and go to a regular. I'm telling you, I need to go to bed. 
So I need to figure out the throttle body on this thing. That's gonna be a little bit of a setback in a sense. We just have to probably go out to the junkyard and figure that out. And then I've got a few lines, a few here. This one here probably went to something on the intake, so I need to figure that out. There, um, we need to figure out the um, VSS on it, and then we have just a few. I know this one's probably um, the reverse lights. That one there might be like a reverse lockout, and then we have another one right down here. I'm not super familiar with these transmissions. I do need to do a little research on them. It's in SRBM. Um, but once I figure out a little bit more on that, it'll go much smoother. Sorry. All right. Now this part of the harness. This would have went to your factory chassis harness, which would probably be like these ones here. I've got to figure out how to wire these. Um, yep, we've got to figure out these. These would have been chassis harness, powers, grounds, send signals to the gauge cluster, all that good stuff. That's those ones there. Um, and then other than that, it's really just a matter of depinning and repinning this guy over here. These three plug right in, no problem. These ones, we've got to do a little bit of wiring on ourselves to get them figured out here. So not a big deal, that'll be pretty easy. And then these will go to another plug that plugs into the ECU. That's all pretty straightforward. Everything on the engine's buttoned up here. I think I'm gonna to talk to Kenny about going turbo on this versus the supercharger. We're gonna to have to remove a bunch of stuff. I think it would just be maybe easier. I don't know. We'll talk to him, see what he says. But that's kind of where I'm at on this. I'm actually kind of at a standstill until tomorrow when I start uh, doing some pinning. Two, three minutes of yawning. When I do some pinning and button a few more things up, I think I am gonna put some oil in this thing tomorrow and uh, just start probing things, get a battery charged and see what I can find out on it. I think I need to go home. Um, it's currently, like I said, about 1.30. So I think I'm gonna go home, get some sleep and uh, come in tomorrow, spend a good while on Kenny's car and then spend a good amount of time on the truck here. Hopefully I can finish that thing up by beginning of next week, Monday area. That would be great. Anyways, I'm out. I'm going to bed. Catch you guys in the morning. We're gonna have some tamales for lunch and Donovan thought we was popping mollies for lunch. <laughs> Anyways, making some progress on the old J-swapped NSX here. I got the power probe out. We've got a lot of the harness hooked up. And I'm just kind of testing some power, seeing what works, what doesn't work here. I know the blinkers are working and stuff, and that's really neat, because I know on like these chassis over here, if you unplug all the chassis harness from the engine harness and you try to like use blinkers and stuff, it goes all haywire. Like you hit your left blinker and your right blinker comes on and it just acts all weird. This one does not seem to be the case. So now I really just have to make all the dash stuff work with what's back here. Um, but I just tried hitting the old starter here with my power probe and she's locked up tight, y'all. Tight, locked up. Starter won't do nothing there. So I'm gonna get a wrench on the crank, try to wiggle this thing back and forth. I did dump a bunch of oil down it, so it definitely does have oil in it now. When it came in, it had no oil, but now, it's got oil. So definitely not worried about that part of it. It's just been sitting a long time. And sometimes when these sit, they just kind of get hard to turn over. So anyways, I'm gonna try to turn this over, see if we can't get it to crank nonetheless. Well, not everything can be easy, eh? Engine's locked up. Tighter than snuff. It gives you like what should be a full rotation on a compression or decompression stroke and then stops. Hard, hard, hard. There ain't enough rust on cylinders to stop it the way that it stops. Um, I thought it was stuck, but if you just go counter, it spins very freely. You go back the other way and it just stops. 
So my assumption now is this was just a mock-up engine. They probably had this laying around their shop, pulled it out of some other car that blew up, said, hey, let's J-swap this NSX. So they were using that as a mock-up engine. That could be my only assumption. I could be completely wrong, but the engine had zero oil in it when it came in. I mean, none at all. Um, so was maybe, I guess, could have kind of been a sign that it wasn't good. Um, but I was just kind of hoping they didn't have no oil in it from putting it in, the install, what have you. Not the case. Um, I guess I'm going to pull all this wiring harness back off and um, pull a bunch of things out of the car. And then looks like I have to finish Nacho's truck now before I can put this on the lift because I can't have two vehicles on a lift when I only have one lift. So I guess I'm gonna continue on Nacho's truck today. I was hoping to wire on the NSX and at least get it cranking, try to figure out some of the uh, electrical. But as of right now, there's really no reason to move forward on the electrical because I can't even test to see if it's working properly. I could check to make sure injectors got pulsed and things like that, but I couldn't crank it over to even see if they were getting fuel or anything of that nature um, with the current way that I have this. So let's just get a good engine in this thing that we know is good and then we can continue to make it run. That kind of seems like the smart thing to do. No reason to wire an engine that just won't run. So back onto the truck. I guess that's where I'm at. I'm gonna cut this leaf or this uh, shock mount off, get it moved up, cut that bar, get it bent and adjusted so it clears the rear end. Um, and then just really try to button up a lot of little things on this, get the gas tank back up in place, um, just all that kind of stuff. So let's dive into this truck, hopefully get it done, knocked out, get it out of my way, so then I can get Kenny's car in on the lift and uh, start getting this engine out of it. <laughs> all right, so I think I found our problem, everyone. Those are the valves right there. <laughs> they, uh, I think they dropped. <laughs> Those are the valves right here on the screen. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. They dropped. Hmm. We shouldn't be able to see them. <laughs> so, that's the cause of that engine not spinning over. All right, after a lot of headache, I finally got Nacho's truck sitting right. It may look a little bit off. But I can tell you that's due to this bed being crooked. You can see it across the back of the cab there. You can see the cab's actually level and this bed is crooked. It sits higher on this side, about a half an inch. But the truck is now squared up, leveled up. Rear is just a skosh higher yet, but I do have to put the fuel tank in the back and make a few adjustments to the front end. So that might bring it around. Probably not, I think I, should have cut an inch less out of the front and would have had it right where I want it. But I think with like one degree of negative camber in the front, it'll turn no problem. We'll just always have a little bit of rake to it. If not, you don't like the rake, I will cut my tabs off that top bar and move them up a little bit more just to get that rear end level. But I think by the time we get everything in it, it's gonna be sitting just like we want. And it's got plenty of shock left in it. And the front, it still has a lot of shock left in it also. So all around, it's sitting good. I gotta get the front bumper on it, get the brakes bled, and get the fuel tank put back in it. So that's really the big things on it. I did find out today, Kenny came by, so that was super cool. Got to hang out with him a little bit. He took some videos and some photos for us, so huge shout out to him. That's always great. Love hanging out with our customers. But he came by on the NSX, just kind of wanted to get an update on it. And we found out it's got a locked up engine. I showed you guys those valves in it. Um, that could just be stuck valves in the head. This could be due to it sitting for a long time. I mean, these spark plugs are all rusty and gross. Um, so it could just be a sign that this engine's at forever and it don't want to turn over. Um, but I truly don't think that is the cause. I think this thing's locked up. If you guys have ever turned an engine over that's locked up, they turn and then they instantly stop. It's like, no matter how much force you put into it, they won't move. That's what this one's doing. Something that's like rusty cylinders and things like that, they'll usually always just ease past it just a little bit. 
nope, this thing's locked up tight. Those valves are dropped. Deal. So we're going to try to get Nacho's truck off, get this thing on the lift, and then this video might actually get a little bit more exciting for you guys because I'm going to try to film quite a bit of this NSX. The four link stuff, it's exciting, but it's not that exciting. And to be honest, you can find it all over the internet. Everything I did on the front end of this, you can find way more in depth than what I did. The four link, man, that's the most basic four link that you'll ever find on the internet. You can find pan hard bars, you can find parallel four links, triangulated four links, the list just goes on and on. So if you guys are looking for the details, that's where to find them is online by somebody else. I'm just trying to give you guys a good time, fill you in a little bit on what we're doing and make these things work. We got the wife back down here. She's feeling better today. That's always a bonus. We missed her this week. Um, but that's where I'm at. I'm actually gonna get out of here. I think I've clocked 80 hours this week. One week, 80 hours. Can't be mad at it. We'll clock another 80 next week. I'm gonna enjoy the weekend actually, I think. I think I'm gonna try work on some of our own stuff maybe. Yeah, I think that's what I should do. Yep, anyways, we'll catch you guys on the next project here. I'm not sure what we're gonna get into. It's Monday. We had a great Easter. It's actually our anniversary, two year anniversary. Yep, that's right. And today we're working like always, but I want to show you guys a quick, cheap and effective hot tank. Well, if you got a tank about this size, you could probably use a rubber tote. Um, it might need to be metal because this is a heater here, but we just got it kind of filled up with some water. You could use a horse trough, the wife just said. Yep, that would work. Kind of anything you got laying around that is metal for sure. Um, you might be able to get away with thick plastic. It doesn't get that hot, like 130 degrees. And then we are just using some good old Zep industrial cleaner. I really like it. Donnie went down to the hardware store, picked that up. We filled up our tank. In here I have four valve covers right now. These things were disgusting. We pulled them out of the junkyard. So you can imagine just grody. But you can hear that stuff going to work. And this is like a $25 heater that Donovan got on the old Amazon. Yep, 25 bucks plugged in. We'll let those sit, I don't know, most of the day, a couple hours nonetheless, and uh, see, see how they come out. They're gonna come out real clean. They were dirtier than this gas tank to give you guys a good prime example. They were worse than that. Caked with grime. Gross, gross, gross. But they're gonna be clean. I'm gonna finish up a bunch of stuff on the old nacho truck today. I gotta notch my rear bar for the struts. Yep, rear shocks, I guess. Not struts, rear shocks. Notch my bar for it. So it rear, clears the rear diff. Right now it's right in line. I thought it was gonna clear, but the truck's sitting lower than I thought it was going to, which is okay. The customer is okay with it. And then I can go ahead do my alignment, brakes, get the front bumper on this thing, get it running. And while it's up in the air, I actually need to do a yoke count for the slip yoke, count the splines on it, see if we can get one ordered. Um, I think we're gonna need one. So that's where we're at on this beautiful Monday. I'm gonna dive into it. Look what the cat's drug back in, y'all. <laughs> we got Frederick in the house. We're gonna get started on this uh, EM1. I'm getting out to his truck to go back up so Frederick and I can get the gas tank in it. And Donnie brought us breakfast. What a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah to that. It's currently Tuesday. Nacho's getting real close. I got his brake lines on last night. All that seemed to work. We went to O'Reilly's, got the line. Mess. Got that all figured out. Did a little rattle can fix on the frame. Um, got it kind of painted up. I gotta cut my bar again, change it up completely. But we're gonna get the gas tank in this thing first to figure that out. And then I should be able to fire this up, get it moved off the lift so we can throw this coupe on. Frederick's gonna pull the head off, get it out of our way. And I think we'll get it on the lift and then it'll be too easy just to have it the car comes straight up at the top. 
because usually what hangs up on these is like the intake down on the cross member back on the rack and pinion area that likes to fight you especially where this one has ac in it yet so i think like he's like get the head off and then that block and trans will just drop right out the bottom real easy probably don't even need to put it on the lift to probably pull it out the, the yeah lifts are great for certain things and can kind of be a pain for other things and on a side note frederick may get to build his first k-series trans this week may we're weighing on parts they're all supposed to be here coming from canada stuck at the border kind of weird <laughs> haven't heard of that one but hey it's all possible damn canadians holding up our stuff actually maybe with all that trucker stuff <laughs> anyways and then we got to hit the junkyard later this week for that engine for kenny's car but we're gonna jump into some work here Only way to win it life. I never miss that stack Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat Put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag Cause I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad light Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail I took the red pill, I know life's short So I wanna live real, but how's it supposed to feel? I gotta say, Donnie's getting pretty dang good on that thing there. Look at these tabs he cut out for us today. Those things are just beautiful. Sure as heck beats going to Summit, spending $30. I bought a whole plate for $30 and we just cut them ourselves. As you guys can see, I've got Nacho's truck back up. Frederick and I came to put the tank in. I knew everything was gonna be real close. Well, it was too close. I could have probably made do with it, but I was still hitting here. I didn't like that at all. So I went ahead, bent this bar, and I'm actually gonna kick it back a little bit. So it'll come close here, and then it'll bend back around the pumpkin and come. So we'll miss the pumpkin now when we come up, and then I will go ahead and get these shocks back on somewhere in that 70, 75 degrees. I've kind of been playing with those, seeing if I'd maybe put a little more pitch on them, get them a little closer to the uh, rear end here. I think if we lose a little slop in the rear end, and we get these a little close, we'll be good. So what I'm gonna actually do now is kind of tighten those up and then I'm gonna remove my lift and I'm gonna bring this truck back down and get it kind of sitting back level. Um, I did, this is my my third time now. I had one that was sitting a little cattywonka so the truck wasn't sitting level because my measurements were wrong. And now the tank don't fit so we're going third time's the charm, right? I ain't mad at it, it's just, it's a learning curve. Frederick's over here cruising, cruising <laughs> on this. And it was definitely a sign of low oil. That one scarred up pretty good, and this one scarred up really good. Yeah, these ones got a good little bit back there. Not a good deal. Um, that hole in the block, it is right. It's a big one. It is, it's a good one, it's right there. Oh yeah, there it is. Ta-da! Yep. B18, B1, so this is just an LS VTEC here, GSR head. So nothing factory to this car. I don't even think that's the factory trans to it because it should have maybe been an LSD. EM1. It is an EM1? Yeah. Okay. So that is the factory trans or to an EM1 nonetheless. I ain't going pretty good here. We haven't ran into nothing crazy on it. Yeah. Frederick does want to tell all y'all to stop tightening that lower alternator bolt so damn tight. It doesn't but need to be super tight. Y'all hear that? Just a little tight, a little Just snug. A little snug. Like a snug bug in the rug, you know? The Not like... Needed. <laughs> he's, he's referring to his brother on that one, I think. Yeah. yeah. And all y'all out there that like to use cheater pipes on those 10 millimeters and snap them off. <laughs> we know you're out there. We know you're there out you there. Are. So I'm hoping I'm gonna get Nacho finished up. I'm gonna get that bar put in and hopefully get everything sitting the way that it wants. Oh, he says. Did it break off? Show sure enough. Sure did. This is what happens when you tighten them too tight. <laughs> Don't do that some more. Ooh, that one's down there. Uh, that one really is fun. in there. 
Good thing you got any head studs. Oh, no, that ain't a head stud. That's not a head stud? No, that's a cam cap bolt. Oh. And these are those aftermarket ones. Yeah. Skunk 2s. Yeah. They're not even OEMs. What happens when you tighten shit down? And then they got torqued too. They didn't even get torqued. They just got Tightened tightened too tight. Tight. Yep. One of them was like, eh. Just kind of, just kind of on there. <laughs> not good. You know that whole saying? Every job is one broken bolt away from being a three hour job two day job five day job that's the case on this because that one's actually down in the head by the looks of things so hopefully, hopefully it's flat with the top of the cam um, or with the top of the head it might be it might have come up a little bit that's gonna be a that's gonna be a weldy deldy and uh-huh all the fun a, stuff uh, yep good stuff, guys. we'll weld her and get her out if not we got another head the joys of it right that's why we got parts just laying around for these folks anyways frederick's gonna knock that out and i am going to get this rear end knocked out Just like that, she came out. Um, this is one of those, not quite a two day, but like a while. So, you know, it's fun not always game. just just fun and games when you're building these engines. You don't know what other people have done, this, that. That one was still in there a good ways. Like that's how much was left. And that's our broken stud. So luckily the welder came in clutch and it came on out. Don't over torque your stuff. Don't do it, people. Just don't do it. So now that that's out, I'm gonna steal the welder from Frederick, come over here, get my plates tacked in, get everything tacked the way that I want it, put this thing up in the air, weld it all in, be done with it. The the gasket? Uh, this one's supposed to be all the way at the bottom. This one's supposed right to now. be oh, huh, all the way down there. Yeah. Like that. Like that first one. Yeah. But it's got a Preston block sleeves. guard. Those are sleeves. Those are straight up sleeves. That's not just a block guard, see? Those are aftermarket sleeves. Darton's are probably something like that. Hmm. So I guess we built. will see. Yeah. They put some time into it, except for, you know, that one. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, those are high speed low drive. I bet you, you might be interested in your uh, epoxy. Yeah, no kidding, right? That'll work for any D series if we can get those out. Yeah, there's no way to repress them. Well, you gotta send off to a machine shop anyway. They won't repress these sleeves. Oh, okay. Makes yep. sense. Yeah, because I mean, they would put them alive. They, they'd be liable. If, something if this block was good, we could bore those sleeves. But with this right. block hole in the oh, block, right, they right, won't right, do. Yeah, you yeah know, or just oversize the crap out of it. Junk. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Later. You could probably. Well, no, you can't. There's a hole in the block. No good. Bottom of the head look pretty good though. Um, let me get these washers out. Yeah. Which that one doesn't even have a washer. Ah, ah, ah. Good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. Probably in the pan. Maybe. Well. Can't quite fit. No, it was under, or it was. Uh, would have been under a bolt, yeah. It would have, should have been under the nut, but it wasn't. Is that also the one that broke? No, it wouldn't have been able to take the washer. Oh, that's right, it was here, right? Was yeah, here. underneath yeah, the top. net on that. Oh yeah, all Gucci, head's fine. So what kind of stuff are you looking for? Yeah. for uh, little thing? dings, dings, dings nicks. nicks. Holes. Is this the one that was up all the way? Yes. Because you look at the intake and the exhaust are pretty much the same color. 
Yeah, and then if you look at that, it just wasn't firing very yeah. at all. Right, because there was no compression there? Yep. Yeah. It's, probably been, it's probably been a problem for a while, right? Heck yeah, man. Yeah, it probably was. All right, so this block might have could have had some goodies at one time. I mean, obviously it did. Wasn't built right, maybe, possibly. Could have been built right, ran low on oil. The head kind of shows signs of low oil. This here, kind of hard to tell. Once we get the bottom end pulled apart, we'll pull this pan off this and see kind of what's all in it. The customer's kind of, he wants to just know for his own sake. I kind of want to know for my own sake. Yeah. See what's, if anything, salvageable in the bottom end. Just kind of see what's all going on with it. But that's where we're at. Frederick got this knocked out pretty quick. Everything looked pretty decent. That one's loose. There was another one that was loose. Where you at? There you are. Okay, a couple there loosies. Well, I mean, they're supposed to be hand tight, but like that's not even hand tight. Yeah. They've actually changed their procedure on those. Did they? It's hand tight plus like 42 <laughs> degrees or something. Okay. It's at, down to a degree now, 38 degree or mm -hmm. something. Then we got the degree wheel. But yeah, they changed that up. I was huh. kind of shocked. Yeah, the last one I did was like, huh? I guess. So cool. Pretty easy. Heads off. We're going to get that engine out. I am going to uh, finish getting this tacked in place and uh, just go from there. Super, super good day. See if you guys can. Oh, dude, it's chew. That crank's done, son. Look at that. Uh... Oh yeah, she's all tore up in there. There it is. There it is, y'all. She done, son. Yep, that's what we're working with. Frederick got that out, just like that. Eesh. Yeah, that crank is done. Ow, it's gone. You. <laughs> uh. Bust out the checkbook. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just write that one off. Yeah. That's a sign for it. You might as well be owning a boat with this engine. <laughs> Bust out yeah. another thousand, y'all. But we're going to salvage a few things. We're going to use his oil sandwich play, a few little things. And I've actually been talking with this customer on kind of what we wanted to do. Kind of seems counterproductive, but it's actually going to be super productive. Right here, we've got an LS block with a GSR head. GSR cams, minty fresh build. I just put that thing together not too long ago. You guys will see that in one of the previous videos, I think. I got, that thing's gonna be just minty. So we're gonna take his intake, fuel rail injectors, all that good stuff, his alternator, sandwich plate, so on and so forth. Put all that onto that engine that we got, put that engine in this car, and then Frederick's stuck building an engine for that car out there. But the bonus to it, we've got a head gasket and another set of ARP head studs now. I'm just gonna have that stuff in stock. I might as well just keep it stocked up around here. Cause we still got a GSR over here that we gotta do something with. That one's Frank, Franklin's, Franklin's, Frederick's. So don't even think about taking it guys. That one's his. Yeah, it's the only one I got left. It's the only one he's got left. Quit picking on the poor guy. Anyways. I'm over here working on this, and man, I gotta say, get yourselves a CNC table if you got a few extra thousand dollars laying around, and, uh, and a computer wizard on your side, because no more waiting for brackets. We've been redesigning and re rebuilding these all day. We started out with these ones, and these will work for something smaller, and then we built these ones. I like these, but then I just had him revise it to this one with already rounded edges pre-made 5 8 hole we're getting it down that's so nice but i'm gonna take these two that i got get them put under there with my uh shock get this thing up in there get it all welded up yo look at this knock sensor frederick just pointed that out engine builders welded nut here because that one goes in and then this is the right thread size for that so then this will still tighten down all of that and that'll detect some knock it's for racing. It's for racing. It's for racing. That's, that's some high-tech stuff there, bud. The best, 
you know, that's the best part about our job is getting to see like all of the crazy stuff that worked. Like it might not have had a, might not have even had a check engine light. Out. Yep. So teach their own. That'll do. That'll do. Obviously didn't detect a knock. Hey, 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 hey. That's hey, hey. Yeah, I'm Didn't shut her down in time. Didn't shut her down in time. Oh, that check engine light? You don't need that. Maybe he has a clutch. Maybe not. We'll find out. All right, y'all. This one's going to work. This bar has a bow up and back to it. So now when the pumpkin comes up, it'll clear that bow there. I got my tabs welded back on. I think that's gonna work. That's part of doing this whole fab stuff and being new to it, learning. I ain't mad at learning. We can all use a little learning. I got Frederick out here. I wasn't lying when I said, pulling this engine right here. Look at this. Good use of the Hatcho truck. Hell yeah. Yep. That wasn't bad. No. That was actually... When they're put together pretty decent, they're not too bad to come apart, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, dang. Or when they're just hanging out in there. Or just when they're hanging out. Too bad we couldn't just drop that in there, right? Right, make a rear wheel drive. That'd be nice. No, into the into the coop. Just oh, right, all yeah. together. Just... Yeah, yeah. But we got to throw his transmission clutch set up on it. And then now we got to rebuild the dang motor for ours. I was really hoping to get that thing sold. But I don't mind putting it on the back burner to get this customer on the road. I'd rather have him back out cruising than me hoping and praying that I get that thing done for us to sell or enjoy. I'm gonna finish up Nacho's truck here. I'm gonna let that cool down, give it a little psh, 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 rattle can. You guys know the deal. Look how nice that rear end looks all rattle canned. Pretty good. I got this brake line set up working. That's gonna work there. And then um, we can bleed the brakes. I gotta put a few bolts back in. I gotta finish taking these off. We got, we got a little bit of work to do on Nacho's truck, and then I can finish up the front end, get the boots and stuff put back on it. Hopefully Frederick and I can get this thing aligned, and then home stretch, baby. Get this thing out of here. We got a coupe coming in that we already worked on. It's coming in for new issues, and tonight we'll be pressing some bearings for Brian and eating some coca shrimp. You guys make sure to uh, mm, go check that place out. If you're in Texas, it might be a chain, coca shrimp it's bomb let's get this truck down and hopefully driving today we're burning the midnight oil down here tonight but on a little bit of a different project yeah some wheel bearings and lower ball joints this is for our boy brian if you guys remember the prelude video we did a bunch of work for him and such a great customer he came down and he's pressing his own bearings out look at this we just got to have the right tools a little teaching and he's got it already on it we're going to press these out replace wheel bearings lower ball joints and then we are going to coat all this for him and the forks get new studs ordered because we're going to go with some extendos and then uh, get those pressed back in get them back to brian so we can get them on his car but for now and then just get these pressed out all quick and easy like get these snap rings out frederick's getting the collars off the old ones and then we'll be going already off the old ones we'll be going right back together with it just one look at that you seen it just a minute ago already done too easy <laughs> guess who's working on their birthday that guy yeah you the big what three nine 38, sir. 38. 38. Dang, I was hoping he was going to say 4-0. I was hoping I was a little low. I don't want to make it that far. You don't want to make it that far? Hey, keep hanging out with us. I'm... <laughs> go hop on that ground, bud. Go, so go hit that jump. Subscribe and find out if I make it two more years. <laughs> there you go. Subscribe and find out. Comment below if you think Donnie's going to make it two more years at the rate we're going. Whew, I don't know. We got Frederick out here just flying around on this one, putting the new alternator in, charging up that battery so this thing's all happy when we get it all back together here. He hates these cars and I, I these cars. and I love them. That's why I make him work on them just because I, I hate them more. so he can hate them more and I can just keep loving them. That's what it's all about. It's a good day down here. I'm really pushing really, really hard to get Nacho's truck wrapped up. That's why I haven't even picked up the camera yet. We didn't get none of this filmed coming out. Busy, busy, busy. But going smooth. He says he hates it. Man, he's gonna get that. He's gonna get that thing in there fired up. I'm like, man, that was easy. That was easy. 
in the midst of valve adjustment. Threw a little PV on those to make it smooth. We got that intake manifold gasket, so that'll be going on there. That thing will be buttoned up, ready to rock and roll. Super, super good deal there, going back in. Like I said, I'm on Nacho's truck. I'm actually currently working on getting my end links all hooked up, getting those all good there. Gotta finish up a little bit of plating on this thing. I gotta get this one filled in here, so I'm gonna bring that right back to there, I think. Kind of put a little angle in that, clean that up. Get the front bumper on this thing, take it for a drive, and hopefully this thing is done. Cross our fingers, cross our fingers. Oh, they up there just getting it. Let's get into work. Just like that, this one's back together and running. Nothing like a brand new alternator. Woo! Frederick even said he's starting to like these cars a little bit. Oh yeah, engine bays are terrible, <laughs> but motors are great. Yeah? Engine bays suck. I told him it's gonna grow on him. And he said, eh, doubt it. I'm real hopeful. He got that thing running. We're super grateful for that. Took a little bit of time. The alternators aren't the greatest. They're not the worst by no means. I went ahead, got all this kind of tightened up, got my boot put on it there. And I'm working on getting on this side, my sway bar end links put in. So got all the bushings in there. Then I actually got to pop this lower ball joint back off to put the boot on. I've got it sitting right there. So we'll get that boot put on, continue on. That car is gonna run for a little while get all its senses put back into place, make sure it's happy, call that customer, get it out of here, and uh, hopefully be moving forward on this one to get it wrapped up. All right, so I got all my boots on, got all my cotter pins in, got my sway bar end links on, got everything tightened up in there, and I'm currently working on these plates. We're gonna finish this piece off here get it looking a whole lot better so that one will go there i got another one for the back side we'll finish off the bottom side there get that all welded up and then the only thing i really 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 have left is getting the front bumper welded on and then i put the truck on the ground double checked all my bolts in the back all that kind of stuff all happy with it now just gotta wrap up these few little things and this truck will be hitting the road frederick's cruising right along Put all the covers back on. Everything's looking real good there. Setting it down. What's Donnie got in his hands? Donnie's wife bought him flowers. Dang, son. For, for my birthday. For his birthday. My birthday. Man. Look how festive the. Put him up next to you. You look so beautiful with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a teddy bear. There you go. Pull in your mouth. Beautiful. Look at him. Look at him. Ooh, I'm about to go take that rose out of his mouth. Golly. But Donnie bought a used engine and it's no good. We got it cleaned up in the hot tank and flipped it over to tape it up and we noticed that. I guess we could have probably cleaned it and noticed it beforehand, but we didn't. So off to the machine shop that one goes. Luckily, they're gonna put the whole thing together for me so I don't have to do it. Can't be mad at that. They'll knock that out for us. We'll get it back, get it all wrapped up, and then we will build the block. It's all good, we double checked it. It's healthy. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Frederick's gonna get that engine in. It's gonna be the end of the week here actually, guys. We're winding down on the week. Hopefully I can finish it off with some burnouts in Nacho's truck. Let's see. Of course he's sure about it. He's going to birthday dinner, everybody. Of what course he's sure. <laughs> what are you doing for birthday dinner? I don't know. I don't have any plans. Um, oh, no um, nope, that was last night. Man, a shout out to our boy Brian bringing that coca shrimp last night. That shit was delicious. Anyways, Nacho's truck's officially on the ground, sitting, I would say, pretty damn level. It looks level. It's as level as it gets. I got a pretty stiff spring in the back, but I think it'll loosen up a little bit. But we got some travel. I might actually have to lift that spring up one in the perch and then the front, well, it's still real soft because of those stock springs. It's going to float like a Cadillac up here in the front end. 
Donnie's just dying. Hop on in there. Can I, can I drive you yet? No, I'm charging the battery, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, turn it up. Turn down. Come on. No, Keep I going. <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> That's all I get. That's all he gets. Frederick's over here. Show's yeah. Over. I gotta do, huh? Show's over. Show's over. Now you gotta get out. No mass. This is all in. Looking good. Getting buttoned up. About ready for a test fire, Frederick even ah. says. <whistles> this guy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Looking good. This, this thing's gonna fire right up, let me tell you. We built it. It's gonna have no issues. Per like a kitten. I'm calling it. Good compression across the board. She gonna be extra, extra good. We got a little work to do on the core support yet, and then we got a bunch of suspension stuff to do. And I guess we are going to be putting this Type R crossbar in there for now. We're gonna polish that guy up. Yeah, this was a real, real OEM Type R bar that we painted white. Yep, used to have a Type R thing right there. Not no more. But we're gonna throw this on that there car. And uh, hopefully get this one back to the customer here shortly. I think tomorrow, Frederick says. Huh? Oh, we got this suspension and shit, right? Yeah. It'll be tomorrow. Hell yeah. Friday? Yeah, Friday Saturday at the latest. Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, Friday, yeah. I think it's at work, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we're at on this. I'm going to actually probably, while that's charging, Get back over here and pull all the supercharger back off and pull all the wiring back out. And uh, I'm most likely going to pull Nacho's truck completely off the lift and get this on the lift because this truck's done other than springs. I have to order two springs for the front. I made a mistake. It happens. We're all human. But I cut the spring. I had 14 inches from the top of the pocket in the frame to the bottom of the control arm when it was pushed all the way down. So I gave myself 17 off of the 20 and I thought it was going to be good but then I lowered everything about four inches and I should have only taken two instead of three. I need an extra inch to be able to steer this truck all the way. Right now you can get like three quarter steer out of it um, but that's not correct, so we're gonna get the springs on the front, and then this thing will actually be stiffened up and not riding like a Cadillac. But that's where we're at. Um, I'm gonna drive this thing around, make sure it's good. I just did an eyeball alignment, and it pushes really, really, really easy. I hope that's all it needed, and then this one can go home. And actually, I'm gonna wrap up my week right there for you guys. Keep you guys hanging. Let you fill in next week to see this coupe running, to see Nacho's truck just doing some big old dirt nasty burnouts and getting delivered back to him. I hope you guys enjoyed this week. I think it was a little bit better paced. Maybe not. I don't know. You let us know down there in the comment section. If you're watching these, give us like a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a smiley face or a frown face or something in the comment section. We'd really appreciate it. We want to interact with you guys a little bit more there on the social media. But that's it for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you next week.